There's good berries. Uh, I'm about six hours in at this point. Um, been moving kind of slow because there's so many berries to eat. Um, yeah, so we're here at Arrowhead Lake and we're just gonna go up into that next basin to set up camp at Hart Lake. Um, I chose this like kind of flat spot to camp um, so yeah I guess right now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take off my boots because my feet are kind of sore um, I'm gonna set up my tent and then I'm gonna eat something because you can probably see how blue my teeth and lips are uh, uh, pretty much all I've eaten today is wild blueberries and black blueberries and um, one blueberry fig bar so I also had blueberries and toast for breakfast so I kind of need something that's not blueberries um, I'm pretty sure Frank would also like to eat before we walk anywhere else yeah Frank I'm here on the summit of Tabletop Mountain and we have an enemy mountain back there and Frank is about halfway down to the coal which is only five minutes from here um, but I kind of had to like race the dark and there was a crux that like I just it was for the distance better than trying to get him up it and then trying to get him down once it's dark so that said I'm gonna head down, meet up with Frank, go back to camp, and make dinner. Woo! Uh, there's not a lot for like uh, infrastructure, people. So that means there's no bear cache, which means you have to make your own food stash. And as you can see, if I open up the tent here, look around. whole lot for trees and the trees that there are are not exactly bear safe trees so I will show you what I did so you can see there's my tent and here's a bunch of trees and if you come around here see this white thing hanging It's my earth sack because there's no way in this clump of trees you're gonna put a bag anywhere it's gonna keep the bears away so 
my favorite thing to have is Ursac. It is bear resistant. Nothing is ever bear proof, disclaimer. Um, I've been using this this season uh, so that I can camp in the Alpine and not worry about rodents. Hopefully bears not getting my food. So all of my and Frank's food in here are dirty dishes, cup and stuff are in here. Um, and they say, just to do lots and lots of knots. So, and then it's tied to a tree. So, the idea is that even if the bear got it off the tree, it would be able to smash up the bag, but it wouldn't get in. I think this is like um, some super human material. I don't know what it is, Kevlar or something. So, um, that's what we did. We just tied it. We, Frank didn't help at all. I uh, just tied it to the tree and then um, doesn't go anywhere. And if these trees weren't here, I would just do what I did, which is like walk away from camp a while and then just like put it on the ground <laughs> or under a pile of rocks and hope for the best. Like it's gonna be another fun smoky day and it is very slightly clearing so fingers crossed um, that wind keeps up and brings the smoke away and hopefully doesn't bring the rain that's forecasted but we'll see I'm just uh, in the process of making coffee because I need that <laughs> I just got up to the bridge of Arrowhead Peak. Um, and we came up through here and it's pretty steep and loose so I took like just like the most solid rock I could find. Uh, you can see down there Heart Lake where we camped last night in the mountains we did yesterday. And it's pretty smoky but there are views all around. So we're gonna be heading this way to the summit. Um, so I'm here on Arrowhead Mountain. Um, when I was over there, I thought this was the summit, but now that I'm here, maybe that's the summit. Regardless, we are going to continue that way, down to the coal with tiny mouth, and then we got to figure out where to go up. Um, from here, it kind of looks like a big, scary pile of rocks and snow, but I know that once I'm there, in it, it won't be so bad. So I'm here with Frank on the summit of Ten Mouth, and uh, back there you can see three summits we've done so far on this trip. Um, the last bit here was pretty scrambly and pretty tense and I had to not only carry my big bag, <laughs> I had to carry Frank's bag because it was a little steep and a little exposed for him to be able to do it with the pack on, um, which made it extra exciting for me. Um, yeah, so there's Frank. Hey Frank! Yeah. Mm -hmm.
So I'm here where I intend to camp, right here. Um, my feet are killing me. Uh, I've had my boots for six seasons now, and this season my feet are bigger. So it sucks. It's been in a lot of pain, um, especially this trip, it seems. Uh, you can see my feet, they have holes and blisters on like half the toes, they have horrible blisters on the heels, um, and there's just not enough space for my feet. They're just constantly getting pounded, um, and I didn't sleep well last night because my eyes were burning probably from the smoke, so instead of going up a long peak, I came here to Long Lake to set up camp and call it a day as soon as I possibly could. Um, but at least I used the energy to find a really pretty spot. So I'm pretty stoked on this. started my day at 3.30 in the morning when I woke up full of energy, but I didn't. I went back to sleep till 8.30, and then I didn't rush. And I was about five minutes from breaking camp and being out of here, and this started. Um, the rain. And it's raining pretty hard. So, considering I have about 15 kilometers ahead of me, I don't really want to start it so. So, I'm going to spend a while here. See if I can wait it out. Um, I know Frank can really would prefer that because he's pretty dry. Um, but you can see I have like all my stuff packed <laughs> and ready to go. And just didn't quite happen. And since no one is going to come look for me until the day after tomorrow, um, I might as well just hang out here and avoid burning calories and see if the in the dry. Yeah, it's raining hard. Hey, I'm here at the Lizzie Creek cabin um, with Frank. He just got back from a little adventure. And you can see my lips are real blue. Um, between Long Lake and here, there was tons of blueberries, black huckleberries, so I just totally gorged. I was starving. Um, so I waited out the rain this morning for about an hour. And then luckily it broke, and I managed to get here without getting too wet. Um, 
And so I'm just like about to have lunch and make some more coffee, eat some chocolate, just kind of consume some weight. You ready to go, Frank? You wanna go ahead, Frank? Okay, I lead. So I'm here at Lizzie Lake and I just stopped and picked a bottle full of um, blueberries and black huckleberries. It is September. These are salmon berries. It's freaking crazy. I've never eaten salmon berries in September, let alone the biggest, juiciest, tastiest salmon berries I've ever had. And my fingers are stained from blueberry picking. I've eaten about eight different types of wild berries on this trip. I have begun my descent from Lizzie Lake. So I have a belly full of berries and a bottle full of berries and 11 kilometers to go and a thousand meters descent. Um, had a pretty exciting moment just back there um, with Bear in the campground. And so pretty stoked to get below the uh, berry zone. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh, you're gonna pull over and let me pass? Okay. So as you saw there, um, Frank is not a fan of leading when we're on a trail. Um, he will always walk right behind me, right next to me. Sometimes he'll go ahead for a little bit and then he finds a way to make sure I get back in front. Now, when we're in the alpine, oh, he'll run all over the place. When we're going up a mountain, better believe he's not waiting for me. He sees where I'm going and he finds an easier way and he's usually up top waiting for me. He's always the first one to the summit and the first one back down. But on a trail like this, uh, I lead. And that's cool. Um, sometimes like an hour go by, I don't even notice. He's just like on my heel and it's great. So I have been booking it down this logging road for what feels like a really long time. Um, and I just like cannot believe that I'm still on this road. You used to be able to drive all the way to Lizzie Lake. And then in 2003, the washout. There's a washout and um, near the start of Lizzie Creek FSR and it was no longer possible by vehicles. So your options were to cross the creek twice to um, circumnavigate the washout or to follow a flagged route that bypassed the washout and uh, which is what I'm on and some time and I'm sure some very nice volunteers who made this a pretty decent path um, over a lot of scree. Uh, anyways, uh, like I said, it's better than 
crossing the creek twice. Especially with Frank, um, creek crossings are kind of stressful with him and if I can, I'll pretty much do anything to avoid it. This is not where I went in. Um, I noticed when I took the bypass trail on the way in, I hit the road and then after a while saw the entrance to the bypass trail I took this time. So I'm gonna guess that I am above it and walk down the road, hopefully find my van. I totally went the right way, which is awesome. Um, didn't realize how much extra uphill I went. And I'm just now arriving home. Um, it is my favorite thing about living in a van is that when you're down a trail, the trailhead is home. I have warm bed, dry clothes, tons of food. And um, luckily here I found this sweet spot where I can just kind of like tuck away um, and let Frank run around. He's not running on the side of the logging road. So 